The wait is finally over. Football is back. It is the first day of Seattle Seahawks training camp from Renton, Washington. And we have everything you need to know coming up on this edition of Seattle Seahawks today. I got five takeaways from day one that we will get to coming up in just a matter of moments. Tyler Jones here with you. Appreciate you joining us. Folks, I am closing in on 2,000 followers on IG, at Tyler Jones Live. Need about 86 more subs to reach that next milestone. Subs, followers, you know what I mean. And so here's a little incentive for you, folks. Uh, I just posted this photo the other day. For everybody that follows me and likes this photo, I will follow you back on IG. So not only should you follow me for daily uh, Seahawks updates, but I will follow you. You scratch my back, I'll scratch yours. Like the photo, follow me, I'll follow you back. And we'll get started with today's show. The Seahawks are underway with their first training camp under new head coach Mike McDonald. And things are sure different these days for your Seattle Seahawks. It was a very good offseason with what went on with the changes the team made through the draft and trades and free agency to OTAs and minicamp. And now the real work begins. And let's start with the running back position. One of the most discussed things heading into this week is what the Seahawks plan to do with their running backs. We've talked previously on this program about the divide, if you will, on how both Kenneth Walker III and Zach Charbonnet should be used, what the split should be. But one thing that is going to be interesting to follow for the both of them is how they are used in the passing game. One big difference that we will see right away, as early as this week, is Ryan Grubb's strategy for getting both involved as receiving backs. And Ryan Grubb has made it no secret that he wants to use both of these guys, as well as Kenny McIntosh and potentially others, in the passing game, specifically with what he wants to do with the screen passing game that was so successful for him with the Washington Huskies. Here is more from Ryan Grubb on the running backs in the passing game. He said this a while back. Oh, yeah, I love doing that. I love doing that. Yeah, we want to make every guy on the field, all five of them, as dangerous as possible from any position on the field. Brady Henderson of ESPN tweeted this out a while back, which I thought was a very fascinating point comparing the previous regime to now. Pete Carroll had four different OCs during his 14 seasons in Seattle. Here's a look at where the Seahawks ranked during each of those tenures in terms of targets to running backs. Bates in 2010 was tied for 14th. Daryl Bevel from 2011 to 2017 was ranked 30th. Uh, Brian Schottenheimer from 2018 to 2020 was ranked 27th. And then Shane Waldron from 2021 to 2023 was ranked 30th. None of those were good. See a trend? See a problem there? Yeah, Ryan Grubb isn't going to live with that. It's time for some change. Change we can believe in, as one former president once said. Let me ask you this. From what we know, are you excited about Ryan Grubb's new offense in Seattle? I was reading an article on ESPN Today talking about potential concern about Ryan Grubb never coaching in the NFL before and all that. Are you excited or are you a little nervous? Be honest with me. Let me know what you think on our pinned comment today. Why for yes and for no way in the comment section. Let us know what you think. Game time is back. It's game time here on Seahawks today as they are sponsoring today's show. Game time is an authorized ticket marketplace of Major League Baseball, which makes getting tickets faster and easier. Prices on the game time app actually go down closer to the first pitch with killer last minute tickets all in prices views from your seat and the lowest prices guaranteed game time takes the guesswork out of buying mlb tickets save up to 60 percent off buying last minute for sports concerts comedy theater productions and more here's how it works let's say i want to go to a mariners game for example pick the mariners game you want to go to then they got the seats listed, and you can see for yourself if you like that seat or not. Get the visual, if you will. And then, boom, just like that, you're checking out within a matter of moments, whether it's Apple Pay, Google Pay, Venmo, all major credit card providers. Game time makes it simple and easy for you. And that's not all, folks. We are offering you $20 off your first purchase when you use the promo code CHATSPORTS. 
at checkout. Download the Game Time app, create an account, use code CHATSPORTS for $20 off your first purchase. Terms apply. Again, create an account and redeem code C-H-A-T-S-P-O-R-T-S for $20 off. Download Game Time today. Last minute tickets, lowest prices, guaranteed. All right, number two in our takeaways. Let's talk about the injury report. It is a little lengthy already for Seattle. Seven players begin training camp on the pup list and five on the non-football injury list. A lot of injuries already for Seattle with key starters involved as well, including players that were supposed to be healthy by now. And then great, Jim. Go over the full list, show you where we're at right now, entering training camp with the Seahawks injury report. Abraham Lucas begins on the pup list. And the last that we heard just a few weeks ago was he was progressing nicely, but he's still not quite ready yet. Jerome Baker and Terrell Dodson, they were supposed to be ready by the time training camp started. They are not. They're on the pup list. We'll see when they return. Lance Boykin at the cornerback position. He's on pup, as is safety Jarek Reed. We're not expecting him to be back for a while. Drake Thomas. Seahawks are very shorthanded at the linebacker spot, as you could tell. And then Cameron Young at the nose tackle position. He's also on the pup list. Now, the non-football injury list includes Anthony Bradford, who, if you recall, actually did make a return during minicamp, so that's kind of odd. Easton Gibbs, DJ James, Nehemiah Pritchett, and D. Williams, all on the non-football injury list at this point, so... Not ideal. If we get any more updates or any more names get added to the injury report, you'll be the first to know about it here on Seahawks Today. Tomorrow, the Seahawks will have an official visit with free agent interior offensive lineman Connor Williams. And if you've been watching this show for the last several weeks, we have talked previously about the idea that the Seahawks should consider signing Connor Williams. Now, Williams is not expected to be available until midseason, due to the knee injury that he suffered week 14 with the Miami Dolphins last year. But, folks, this is somebody that was the highest graded interior offensive lineman in the NFL last year. You have to assume, I think it's safe to assume, that you're not going to be 100% healthy on this offensive line by the time Connor Williams would be available. He can play guard. He can play center. He's a quality starter. Whatever may happen, God forbid something happens, Connor Williams will be ready to step in and be a quality starter should something go down. Or what if just one of your guys are struggling? What if Tomlinson, Hayes, Haynes, Bradford, or Olu just isn't up to snuff? Then you have a safety net. It's it's like a midseason trade without having to give up anything, potentially. The report from ESPN's Adam Schefter uh, saying the following earlier today, former Dolphins and Cowboys Free agent center Connor Williams, who has started 77 NFL games, is scheduled to visit Tuesday with the Seahawks. More on Connor Williams, a former second-round pick out of the University of Texas. The eyes of Texas are on Connor all the live long day. Previously played for the Cowboys and the Dolphins and was the highest-graded interior offensive lineman by Pro Football Focus in 2023 with an 86.5 grade. So I think Seahawks should sign him. If he can pass a physical and they think he's up to snuff, makes a ton of sense for me. What say you? Type S for sign, P for pass. Let us know if you think the Seahawks should sign Connor Williams or not. Seahawks today is going to be all over Seahawks training camp for the next few weeks here on the channel as we bring you daily updates on what's happening with your Seattle Seahawks. Any big news that comes from training camp, we're going to be all over it here on the channel. We are your training camp headquarters here on Seahawks today. Subscribe now for free. Be a friend, tell a friend, make sure they're a part of this channel, and let's reach our next milestone of 53,000 subscribers on the channel. YouTube.com slash Seahawks TV to subscribe now. Number four on our training camp takeaways. Time to get out the dice, folks, as the Seahawks are rolling the dice with young offensive linemen heading into 2024. It was no secret this was going to be the case for the Seahawks, but now as we sit here on the brink of training camp here, it is official. They're going to go with what they got at this point in time. I'll be honest, this is the position group I'm worried about the most out of any of them. But if Charles Cross can come into his own and play like the top 10 pick that he was 
in his third season. That would be huge. If Abraham Lucas can figure out this knee situation, if it's not a chronic issue, if he can step up, then that would be huge. And it will make everybody better. Then you can figure out the interior offensive line from there. But to me, it starts with those tackles. If they do their part, then that's a good starting point for everybody else in that front. Ryan Grubb said this recently on the situation involving the Seahawks offensive line. We've got a little ways to go there, and I just mean more about the reps and opportunities. Some of the guys are still working through things and getting back, so there's been a lot of guys shuffling in and out there. But we've been working through some of that, and I think that they'll continue to grow each week. I think Charles and Lakin have done a good job of building the mesh of the left side a little bit, so that's probably the most uh, continuity we've seen in those two guys working together. I think that's the next step for us continuing to build continuity within that group. If the season began today, your likely starting five on the O-line would go as follows with Cross, Tomlinson, Olu, Haynes, and Lucas as your starting five. Bradford and Haynes competing for that starting right guard spot. We'll see how healthy Abraham Lucas is when the season begins, but certainly some big questions to be answered on this O-line if they can get the job done or not. Last but not least on our training camp takeaways, as we enter day number one of camp, expectations are sky high for Jackson Smith in Jigba, entering 2024, his second year with the Seattle Seahawks. The Seahawks are going to ask a lot out of JSN this year. It's not going to be just good enough to be the number two receiver on this Seahawks team. They used a first-round pick on him for a reason they need him to take a step up and be a guy that can get 1,000 yards every year, that can be a Pro Bowl caliber receiver. And ultimately, he needs to pass up Tyler Lockett on the depth chart and do so pretty quickly. That's not a knock on Tyler Lockett, but the reality is JSN is the future. He is the long-term plans. Tyler Lockett is not. Well, hopefully, they get a deal done with DK Metcalf and extend him, but that remains to be seen. The only one you know for certain that's going to be there a long time is JSN, and he needs to show up and show out and be trusted to be able to be the guy for Seattle for a long time. Corbin Smith of SIL Seahawks said the following on JSN heading into camp. This spring, Smith and Jigba lit up on the practice field from start to finish during OTAs and mandatory minicamp, including scoring seven touchdowns during team sessions in a single practice. His route running savvy, elite acceleration, and soft hands should make him a perfect fit for Grubb's offense, which featured two similar players stylistically in Jalen Polk and Jalen McMillan at Washington as key weapons. And a new play caller should move him around more than his predecessor to maximize upon his talents. With Metcalf still being the lead dog for the foreseeable future and Lockett remaining a quality complementary receiver at worst, it may be too early for Smith and Jigba to surface as Smith's primary go-to target. And that was the talk during... Uh, the off-season workouts was that he was uh, Geno Smith's favorite guy. And you look at what he did last year. He was okay, third in catches and receiving yards and receiving touchdowns, but he's got to do more than that. And I think JSN is going to step up and have a big season and really all begins this week of a JSN showing up and showing out. Will he lead the Seahawks in receiving? Or is it going to be DK or Tyler Lockett or Noah Fan for that matter? Weigh in, let us know who you think the Seahawks' leading receiver will be in 2024. Thanks for joining us here on Seahawks Today. You can follow me on IG at Tyler Jones Live for continuing Seahawks coverage. I will see you next time right here on Seahawks Today.